Today, I'd like to begin talking about primate behavior. Compared to other mammals, primates spend a greater proportion of their life growing up, both biologically and socially. They require a long period of parental care. Thus, we see an increased emphasis on learning versus instinct compared to other mammals. So why do anthropologists study non-human primate behavior? <clears throat> well, these primate behavior studies are seen as models for what early human behavior might have been or for the origin of such behaviors. Primates and humans share ancestors. So when the relationship is close enough, the behavior may be seen to be homologous. The two primates used most often for interpreting the origin of human behavior have been the chimpanzee, our closest relative separated from them only five or six million years, and that is seen as, as homologous behavior. But we also look at the baboon, much more far distantly related, and this is seen as analogous behavior. The baboon is terrestrial with arboreal ancestry. The early studies of primate behavior were done in laboratories and zoos, but beginning in the 1970s, people began to move into the wild and observe uh, the primates in their natural habitats. Most of these studies were done by women. The most, among the most famous is Jane Goodall, um, who wrote her dissertation, uh, here it is, The Chimpanzees of Gombe, Patterns of Behavior. And uh, we'll be watching this movie um, on Monday. Much has been published. Shirley Strum studied the baboons. Diane Fossey studied mountain gorillas. and Barute Galdikas has studied the orangutan. Primates recognize individuals, just as you and I can, and each individual holds a certain status within the dominance hierarchy of the group. Primate social systems are maintained through communication. I list the forms of communication here, and then I'll go over each one individually. But these are facial expressions, vocalizations, <clears throat> body language, and touch. The first form of communication is facial expressions, and Jane Goodall documented chimpanzee facial expressions. You'll be seeing quite a few of these in the movie that we'll be watching. Here also a savanna baboon is threatening the photographer with the characteristic yawn that shows his canine teeth. And also he closed his eyes briefly to expose light cream colored eyelids. And this a type of facial expression has been termed the eyelid flash. Here's a chimpanzee with the full closed grin indicating fear or excitement. Here's a chimpanzee with compressed lips showing aggression. We can see many of the same facial expressions that we recognize among humans. Vocalizations are another form of communication. And among chimpanzees, vocalizations are closely bound to emotion. That is, they can't make the sound without experiencing the emotion. The calls are elicited by or directed toward individuals in the same party or community members in different parties, even individuals of a neighbor community, and even non-animate environmental stimuli or animals of other species. Chimpanzee mothers recognize the screams of their own offspring. Jane Goodall mapped out the types of emotions or feelings and the calls. And you can see that some of these calls cross cut the emotion or feeling. Again, chimpanzees laugh, for example, when they are enjoying body contact. They have a food grunt. 
uh, many different um, communication signaling social excitement. Touch is a third form of communication, and physical contact is frequently used to reassure or appease distressed or tense individuals. Social grooming is a significant aspect of chimpanzee social life. For example, here are chimpanzee siblings embracing at a reunion, or another open mouth kiss at a reunion, or a greeting where one chimp kisses the other. Finally, body language. Nonvocal communication occurs through a variety of postures and gestures. I think we can all recognize uh, what this young chimpanzee female is feeling. Body language can include submissive patterns such as presenting, extending the head, hand, crouching, or bobbing, or aggressive patterns such as waving arms, bipedal swaggering, the shoulder hunch, and the male charging display. Most communication that depends upon visual cues takes place at close range, except for females in estrus. Here are two examples of male charging displays, and you can see the bipedal uh, walking, the puffing up to look large, the shoulder hunch. The chimp on the left approaches with apprehensive pant grunts, while the dominant, dominant chimp on the right shows the sitting hunch. Here's a chimpanzee screaming while crouching in a temper tantrum. Here, the dominant male is on the left, the submissive male on the right is bobbing and uttering pant barks. Thus, communication relies on a combination of facial expressions, vocalizations, touch, and body language, all working together. Among chimpanzees, social interactions are tied to emotion. All chimpanzees, regardless of age, tend to act the way they feel, with little or no masking of their emotional state much like human children. Beginning in the 1960s, researchers sought to find out whether primates could be taught the American Sign Language um, because they wanted to learn more about their cognitive abilities. The first taught sign language was Washoe, a chimp who knew 350 words. Since then, other chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutan have been taught sign language. What researchers found is that the primates can use symbolic language. They can express new ideas, apply to new concepts. So for example, they can make up a name for something whose name they didn't know in sign language. They understand displacement. They can discuss things that are not present in space or time and this language is learned. They have observed these animals signing to themselves when playing alone. They've also observed them teaching their son or daughter sign language. They're able to form short sentences at about a human two to three year old level. Let's look now at the activity patterns for most anthropoid or non-prosimian primates. The day is divided into three main activities, feeding, moving, and resting. And only a small part of the day includes sex, grooming, or territorial displays. Grooming is the ritual cleaning of another animal's coat. For gorillas, it is actually hygienic. But for chimps and baboons, it provides social cement. Grooming is done for friendliness, submission, appeasement, and closeness. Turning now to similarities between humans and primates. When we look at human and primate behavior, many differences are in degree rather than in kind. All primates, including humans, learn from experience throughout their lives. 
And among chimpanzees, this includes making and using tools. So one chimpanzee observes another making a tool and they learn how to do so. Even gorillas make nests and throw objects. In the wild, baboons or gorillas don't make or use tools to a significant extent. But chimpanzees and orangutans do. What is a tool? Well, it's an object used to make a task and it needs to have been made. There needs to have been some deliberate modification of something for an intended use. Even if that's simply stripping leaves off of a twig. In making tools, chimpanzees have been known to follow some patterns, prepare the tool for future use elsewhere, use tools to solve new problems, and learn how to make tools and how to use them from other chimpanzees or from watching humans if they happen to be uh, in the zoo somewhere. Both baboons and chimpanzees are known to hunt other animals for meat. Baboons favor eating young antelopes, whereas chimpanzees prefer to eat red colobus monkeys. They eat the meat raw. Hunting is both opportunistic, but it also has been planned. Hunting frequently involves teamwork, unlike other forms of gathering food. Meat is often shared, and among chimpanzees, meat is sometimes used to obtain sex or to submit social alliances. What about socialization? Primates living in groups manage social interactions through a dominance hierarchy and a network of alliances or friendships. Males, generally speaking, are dominant over females. And when there are hostile group intergroup encounters, males dominate those. Yet the mother-child bond is very strong. You see here, for example, Fifi with one of her sons on her right-hand side, who is quite um, grown up but still coming to visit and hang out with his mother. All of these behaviors come together, as they do among us humans, to make for life in a social setting. So communication, including facial expressions, vocalizations, touch, body language, depend upon and reinforce the social situation. Behavior and responses are learned. What's the appropriate behavior? What's the appropriate response? What differences have we seen between humans and primates? Well, humans appear to be the most cooperative. We regularly share food and we may obtain food together. We rely on meat more so than do other primates. We have a more omnivorous diet. We also don't eat constantly and, and therefore also eliminate constantly, but we eat in periods and eliminate at just a few times a day. And human language contributes to greater information storage. Humans also mate throughout the year, whereas other primates mate only when the female is in estrus. Here is a female chimpanzee in estrus, and you can see um, kind of a swollen red area on her rear end, signaling to males that she is ready for mating. Humans also recognize marriage, and we create kinship systems with marriage rules. And these rules can provide ties and affiliation between members of different groups. Be sure to watch Primate Behavior Part 2, in which I summarize the behaviors that we probably shared with our earliest human ancestors.